Now, let me ask you something. With all the distractions that you have off the field, how are you able to keep focused on winning football games as you do and do throughout the year? When you have great coaches, then after you have great coaches, you get great players. You have a great organization, and you tell them one thing. Just win, baby. come up with that for him those were his phrases that he came up with that he believed in just win play hard try not to make mistakes but don't worry about mistakes because there's only one thing that counts just win the SC Raiders talk aka your boy Eric and we back we back again we back we back good to see everybody in here man hope all is well shout out to everybody that's coming in man hey make sure to hit that like button subscribe if you're new and welcome again uh, hopefully your guys's week is doing well and uh, hopefully your guys's week weekend the past weekend has been good good to see everybody though um, let me shout out a couple people so far, man, just to give a shout out to everybody, man. Shout out to Robert Penn in the building was good. You already know what it is, man. You already know what it is. I ain't got to uh, Let me see. You already know. Man. All day, every day, man. Shout out to you, man. Shout out to my two cents in the building. What up, my two cents? What's good? What's good? Alfredo, salute. What's good, Alfredo? Good to see you. Raider Resistance, Prez in the building. What's good, Prez? Good to see you. Hope all as well. Shout out to everybody coming in, man. Athena Estrada was good. Athena Estrada, Chad Schrader, Auntie Six, man. 22 months is insane, bro. 22 months is insane. I ain't gonna lie. 22 months is insane. Let me take this off. Give me a second. 22 months is insane. Shout out to you, man. Hope all as well. Shout out to Chad Schrader. Like I said, was good. And good to see you. Hope all as well. Shout out to Milka Beezy. What's good, Milka Beezy? What's good? What's good? What's good? Protect the shield was good, my brother. Hope all is well. Shout out to you, man. Shout out to everybody coming in. SoCal Sal was good. SoCal Sal, man. Shout out to everybody coming in little by little. Well, I'm actually excited because it's a new setup. And I'm not talking about the setup here. I'm talking about the setup on the show. And I go lie, it's an it's a new way to structure the show. As you can see already, this is new, what you're seeing in front of you right here. So when I pull up comments, you feel me? It's right underneath the stuff like that. But besides that, besides that, I also have where we will go through the topics together. And, uh, you know, I want to get straight into it, man. I'm just letting a little uh, uh, people come in little by little. Shout out to Charm City. Jay, what's good, Charm City? Jay, good to see you, man. Hope all is well. Shout out to everybody coming in, man. Like I said, hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new. And we back, man. We back again to talk about a lot of things, man. There's a lot of things to talk about. Quarterback scenarios, draft scenarios, all different things in general, man. And shout out to everybody coming in slowly but surely. Uh, but let's let's get straight into it, right? Let's get straight into it, man. Let's get straight into it. So obviously, this is the new setup. Hopefully, you feel me. It's something that makes it more easier to look as well uh, as as listen to and stuff like that. But shout out to everybody coming in, man. Hope all is well. Shout out to everybody. Um, good to see Cool Kev. What's good, Cool Kev? Good to see you. Hope all is well. But yeah, this is the new setup. This is how it's going to look now from here on out. You feel me? When I do shows alone, you feel me? We still have the two for one on Thursdays, though. But let's get straight into it, right? Let, let's let's get straight into it, bro. Let's talk about Aiden O'Connell, man. Let's talk about some quarterback controversy. Different things to talk about here uh, when it comes to the quarterback controversy. Number one, number one is Antonio Pierce had like an interview slash like, how do I say, interview slash speech 
slash whatever you want to call it. It wasn't really a conference. It was more of they sat down, asked some questions, yada, yada, yada. And some of his quotes about the quarterback has been, we've got two quarterbacks on the roster. That's not good enough. We like to have three or four going into spring, into training camp, and that's where I see us going. Shout out to Kevin Lurker in the building, John Leon. Good to see everybody coming in, man. My two cents was good. Good to see everybody coming in. Salute, salute, and hopefully I didn't miss anybody. But obviously, that's one of the things he said. And then obviously, carrying on here. You're looking for somebody that wants to come in the room and be competitive. Give us an edge. And again, if it's a rookie, if it's Aiden, if it's Minshew, if it's Brown, we're going to put the best player out there that gives us the best chance to win. And at the end of the day, this is a controversy happening across the nation, right? Some people are saying start Aiden O'Connell. Other people are saying don't start Aiden O'Connell, start Garner Minshew. Even others are saying go out there, get a Jaden Daniels, go up there and trade up, go get a Drake May, or go out there and get a Michael Penix in the second round, stuff like that, and obviously start them. There's a lot of scenarios when it comes to this quarterback position. For me, what I took from it, obviously, is the first thing that he talked about, which was obviously the more than two quarterbacks, right? Shout out to Raider Way. What's good, Raider Way? Good to see you. Hope all is well. As you can see there, he talked about we were like three or four going into spring and into training camp. So far, there's only been two. Plus the guy in the practice squad pretty much, but he's like somebody that's probably not going to even make the roster. So in my opinion, it's going to be it's going to be both Gardner Minshew so far, Aiden O'Connell, and then a rookie that we draft. Who is that rookie? The question still lies who that rookie is going to be. Who is the quarterback number one going to be? And going on and on and on about that, right? To see what, what happens there. Uh, but obviously, obviously for me, um, I'm kind of like the same way where he let the best guy win. Um, you know, I, I don't hate the worst case scenario, right? The worst case scenario is Aiden O'Connell. I know some people hate it. They think we'll go, we'll, we'll only win like three games, four games, five games. but Obviously, in my opinion, I think Aiden O'Connell could at least win you games. And he showed it last season. I mean, he beat Kansas City pretty much, right? Him and Zamir White. So, you know, we got to give him credit for what credit's due. And at the end of the day, you know, who knows with one off season and all these different things, right? Uh, but for me, what I love for the Raiders to trade up, obviously, right? And this leads me into the next one, right? And obviously... It has to do with the draft scenarios there, right? The Raider draft scenarios, there's a lot of them. There could be stay at 13 and pick certain people or end up going with the quarterback in front of you, right? Um, and obviously, as you guys can see on your screen, a draft scenario in particular is Jaden Daniels. And Jaden Daniels here um, obviously has been one of my favorites. Um, he has had a little bit, you know, watching more and more film, a little bit of fault um, there. But at the same time, he's a guy that, has that connection with Antonio Pierce. And not only that, is a top five quarterback in this year's draft with high potential, a guy that could both run and pass the ball and also be able to move around the pocket what the Raider Nation has been asking for. And that's one of the scenarios right in the draft. Trade up, go get Jaden Daniels, go get Drake May, go trade up and get your quarterback of the future that's going to start day one most likely and end up progressing at that level. So... Obviously, one draft scenario is obviously Jaden Daniels um, when it comes down to a Jaden Daniels there. And then, obviously, the next draft scenario, right? That's one thing, trading up, right? Which you have New England. That's something else I wanted to talk about. You have New England, right, that's willing to give up their pick, apparently. Um, Gerard Mayo likes Jacoby Brissett, which is pretty surprisingly. He likes certain quarterbacks out there. Um, that he already has on the roster. So does that mean they might go for a wide receiver and offensive line to kind of go about New England? They could go that route, right, at pick three. But they could also, right, they could also obviously um, trade back and trade with the guy. And then somebody like the Raiders would go up and trade for their quarterback or some other team, right? The Vikings are a team that could go up and go grab their quarterback. Um, you just never know, right, with, with the draft. And obviously one scenario, like I said, is obviously go up and get Jaden Daniels. Shout out to shout out to All Eyes. Let me get to some of these comments real quick. Shout out to All Eyes on G. What's good, All Eyes? Good to see you. Hope all is well, man. Um, shout out to everybody coming in here, man. He says Jaden Daniels. I feel that. I feel that. 
Uh, I'm team trade up for JD5. Okay. I feel that, man. I feel that. And obviously, those are all things that, that are possibilities, right? Shout out to Tony Sheffrey. What's good? What's good? The Pats lack chocolate is what he really meant. <laughs> Shout out to Tony, though. It was good. Good to see everybody coming in, man. Good to see everybody. Uh, but obviously, those are some scenarios, right, at that place. So obviously, going back, that's one of the draft scenarios there. Now, obviously, another one is staying at 13. And who could that be? Is Fuaga has been one of my favorites at that right tackle spot uh, for pick 13. Four pick 13, four pick 13. And obviously, that's somebody that I would take at 13 if we stayed at 13. The guy is your future right tackle, played right tackle pretty much uh, in his college day. Uh, well, well, obviously, in college, um, he's one of the best right tackles in, the, in, in this year's draft. And I truly believe that. Um, next to JC Latham, right? I like, I like JC Latham a lot. Um, that's another guy that I would go out there and snag. And all these different things. So um, that's one other scenario if you stay at 13, right? If you stay at 13. And obviously, um, I can't be mad if we stay at 13 and get Fuaga. I feel that. You know, obviously, that's, that's, that's one scenario pretty much, right? Obviously, right? <clears throat> Shout out to everybody here, man. I would take Fuaga at 13. Okay. I would too. Like I said, man, Fuaga is one of those guys that I would go out there and snag easily, right? Um, so obviously, 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 that's a draft scenario there, staying at 13. Um, and like I said, Fuaga to me is the number one guy that I would love at 13. Um, and then JC, right? JC Latham, another guy that possesses a lot of things, right? Um, his footwork is a little bit messed up, though. Um, in my opinion, and he does need a little bit of more help, which that's where the coaches obviously come in, help with those tendencies. And then obviously he needs a little work on his run blocking when it comes to his uh, balance, obviously. Uh, but besides that, like I said, um, you know, this is my number one. Um, and then J.C. Latham, like I said, J.C. Latham and Fuaga are my number one, too. Um, guys at that right tackle spot. And shout out to everybody, man. Who is Fuaga? Well, Fuaga is an Oregon State tackle, right, for one. Oregon State tackle that also, also was a right tackle. Um, one is, was one of the best. Did not allow a single sack. Did not allow a single sack at that tackle spot in 2013. And he went against a lot of good, good defensive ends, right? A lot of good defensive ends for one. Um, obviously, a guy like Latu, right, from UCLA. He's got film out there against the best of the best. And um, in my opinion, he's one of the best right tackles. I would really highly recommend, highly recommend. Um, if you have his film or you want to go look at highlights even just to see what he's capable of. I know highlights don't show everything. But obviously, um, if you have the film or you have some way of going out there on Twitter, right? X, known as X now, and stuff like that, you could go out there and um, look at that. And you'll be impressed for what you see. Um, but I like Fuaga. He will be our future right tackle 100%, and he will help whatever quarterback ends up starting, right? The other draft scenario is the D tackle spot. How do you guys feel? And shout out to Angel, man. Let me hold up. Let me give a shout out to everybody coming in, man. Shout out to Angel. What's good, Angel? Good to see you. Hope all as well. Shout out to Angel coming in, man. Good to see everybody coming in. Surely, but surely. And shout out to Lake Show. Like I said, shout out to Lake Show, man. Uh, shout out to everybody coming in, man. Make sure to share this out. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new, man. A new setup here. Hopefully, you guys enjoy it. If you're looking at it, um, you feel me on the screen. Or if you're just listening, shout out to you. And hopefully, uh, later on, you get to see um, in front of you. But obviously, I have a new setup going on here. I'm a little bit more structured now um, here. Shout out to Brad Labs, man. Shout out to Brad Labs coming in, man. You already know. You already know what it is, man. Shout out to you, Brad Labs. Good to see everybody coming in. Um, but obviously that's somebody, right? But how would you guys feel about a defensive tackle? Would you guys take a defensive tackle? That's the question. For me, I don't know how I feel about a defensive tackle at 13, y'all. Um, obviously you see Jawan Newman right here in front of you, uh, one of the best D tackles in this year's draft. Uh, but me personally, I would not 
I don't want a D tackle at 13. I know some people would like that, but for me personally, I would not like a D tackle at 13. I think there's a lot of D tackles you could get in the second, third round. And we already have practically our starters and our backups pretty much. All we really need is a rookie to learn under this guys. And I think for a D tackle, I would rather get a D tackle in the third, fourth, fifth, sixth round instead of the first round uh, for me personally. So obviously another draft scenario is the defensive tackle room. Um, and, and building that up, obviously, you could get a great D tackle at 13. Obviously, I don't even think a D tackle would go in top 10, in my opinion. So, obviously, you would get a great D tackle. But we already have good D tackles in the room. I think we really don't need a, a, a D tackle in the first or second round. I think you need to address more of the offense the first and second round, in my opinion. Um, shout out to Raider Paul. What's good, Raider Paul? Good to see you. Hope all is well. Right. Shout out to Raider Paul in the building. What's good, Raider Paul? Um, JD or offensive tackle, man. I feel the same way too, Raider Way. Uh, shout out to Raider Paul. Salute, salute. Lecky Tapu, what's good, man? Good to see you. Hope all is well. Hope all is well, man. Good to see everybody in here, man. We good on DT. Uh, let's keep developing Nesta. He showed flashes when he's on the field. That's a fact, Mil Kavizi. And that's why I don't want to go D tackle first or second round, bro. I don't want to go first or second round. In my opinion, right? I wouldn't go first or second round. So, you know, each all teach all, right? Um, shout out to everybody coming in, though, man. Good to see everybody, man. Salute, salute. Hope ball as well. And thank you guys for being here, man. Thank you guys for being here. You guys are the first to see this new setup, man. That I'm trying out, you feel me? And it's looking good so far, man. Just want the season to start. And it's the same way, Brad Last. I'm excited for this season, man. I know people are like, Wow, if we don't get our quarterback, it's going to be a, a bad season, horrible season, all these different things. But in my opinion, I think we're going to do better than last year. I think that's a prediction that I do have, that we will be better than last year. By how many more wins, I don't know. Right? I'm not going to predict that. I'm not going to predict the record. I, I don't predict records no more because at this point, um, they, oh, you know, they end up letting me down. I end up feeling so hurt and stuff like that when they don't hit my expectations. So for me, I had no expectations, but what I do, uh, like in general, is the fact that I know we're going to be better, right? He said, can we enjoy summer first? <laughs> he said, pause, Penix is hard. <laughs> Penix is the other way too, right? Penix is the other one, right? Set up his fire. I appreciate that, Angel. I appreciate that, man. Good to see everybody, man. Good to see everybody. But back to what else there is. But there's all those draft scenarios, right? He said, give it until week one when he says the score of the game. Uh, so now those are three draft scenarios. Now another draft scenario has to go with the cornerback position, y'all. How do you guys feel about trading back for a cornerback? People say Terry on Arnold in the first round at pick 13. I think you get Terry on Arnold later on, y'all. Because a lot of teams value Kool-Aid McKinstry, his partner in crime, his duo at Alabama higher than Terry on Arnold. But for the Raiders, they have Terry on Arnold above Kool-Aid McKinstry. Now, the biggest question is, would you go after a cornerback at pick 13? Or would you trade back for a cornerback? For me personally, I would trade back for a cornerback, in my opinion. I think that's the best case scenario for a cornerback. If you go that route, I think you go back and that's the best thing you can do. Obviously, that's the best thing you can do. So uh, me personally, I would trade back. A shout out to we the people in here. What are we the people? Oh, let me get to the comments. Shout out to we the people. Let's go we the people. Good to see you. Shout out to Swift Raider. To lease, trade up for Penix late first or early second. Fisk or Trotter, Bucky Irvin or Ray Davis, Kyrie Jackson. Zach Zinter and Frank Crum to finalize my trade for the fourth for linebacker Eichenberg. See, what I like about your thing right there, Swift, uh, Swift Raider, your comment there, I like going this route, right? Just based on the names you said, the best case scenario for me personally off of the names you named will be Talese Fuaga at 13, Penix in the second, then Fisk later on. I, I, I made a prediction about the draft, right? I said that the Raiders will end up with two second round picks on the day of the draft, when the draft begins or when the draft is about to go to the second day of the draft in general. For me, 
my prediction is they will end up with two second rounders. One would be a quarterback if they don't trade up for Jaden Daniels. And the second scenario is a D tackle or a cornerback in the second round. That's my prediction. Two second round picks on for the draft. So I would personally go Talis Fuaga. I would go Michael Penix. Then Fisk. I like Brayden Fisk from Florida State a lot. And then I would be cool with Bucky Irving. And let me give you a different one. Braylon Allen. Another one that I would like. Braylon Allen. I don't know about you guys. I like Braylon Allen. That's another guy that I like. Um, but yeah, obviously, these guys are all guys that I would go out there and get, obviously. Um, those are all the, the moves, pretty much, um, that I predict that would happen. And you you see what Milka Beasy says, man. Make sure to hit that like button, man. Subscribe if you're new. I will greatly, greatly appreciate it. So now I'm moving on here. Obviously, um, wait, let me get some more comments real quick. I like the process of giving up, first, uh, giving up three first-rounders and other future capitals could put us back. Let Tom Telesco go to work, can't mortgage our future for JD, in my opinion. See, we got to remember the Trey Lance, uh, Trey Lance trade. Do you guys remember the Trey Lance trade? Do y'all remember that trade, what the Niners did? Y'all remember Trey Lance trade? For the San Francisco 49ers to trade up for Trey Lance, they gave up three first-round picks. The Cowboys sent them a fourth round pick. And there was a third overall pick. So they sent three first round picks to trade up for a quarterback. Would you guys pull the trigger on that? Would you guys pull the trigger on that deal to go up and get your future quarterback for three first rounders minimum? That means this year's is gone, next year's is gone, and the year after that is gone, plus probably more. Would you make that? Would you make that trade? That is the question I give to you guys, man. Would you guys make that trade? Me personally, as much as I would love to get a quarterback in the top three, as much as I would love that, and I've been screaming for Jaden Daniels to be a Raider, the cost, I think, is too heavy. I think the team right now on offense is not built yet in order for a young rookie quarterback to come in and do that. But if you have the chance to be aggressive, I would 100% be aggressive because at the end of the day, Getting a franchise quarterback is very important still. It is very important, 100% important. Um, so I will say that value is high. It's just, will you be willing to, is Tom Telesco able to negotiate a good deal? Only time will tell, right? Milka Beasy says, yes, make the trade. Nothing matters unless you have a, a, your franchise quarterback. And a quarterback is important. Quarterback wins you the Super Bowl towards the end in crunch time. We've seen it with Brock Purdy fuck it up, right? Brock Purdy fucks it up. Jimmy Garoppolo sold the bag. And so on and so on. But we also seen the other side of the spectrum, right? And I think both sides are not wrong. I think that the problem right now with the Raiders, right? The Ra With fans in general, us fans, right? We watch, we're so passionate, we're right or dies, stuff like that. I think the problem with most of us is that we argue about two different sides of the spectrum that is not wrong either or. Because if you look at it, Brock Purdy, for example, the most recent, when it's crunch time and when you need him to win, he doesn't execute. That's when you need a good quarterback. Now, you look at the other side of the spectrum, building a team no matter what is the Buccaneers. Now, even though Tom Brady was their quarterback, I still believe that the Bucs won that Super Bowl because of their defensive line. And they went against one of the best quarterbacks. I hate to say it, but one of the best quarterbacks of today's league and today's era of the NFL in Kermit the Frog, Patrick Mahomes. 
they made him look horrendous. Even though the receivers did drop a couple passes, he still looked bad because he was running for his life that whole Super Bowl. It looked like it was so sad to watch, even as just just a fan of football and just watching the Super Bowl. It was it was funny to watch. Don't get me wrong, I I loved it. I go lie, I, I go lie. I loved it. I go lie. I loved every bit of it because it was funny him running for his goddamn life. But they showed the blueprint. They showed the blueprint, and that game was so sad that they had commercials that were so sad during that Super Bowl. I don't know if you guys remember that Super Bowl. <laughs> there was it, that game was so sad that there was literally commercials that were sad that were about the American Red Cross, all these different things about puppies and dogs and all these different things wanting to be adopted because of how bad Patrick Mahomes was running for his life. That's so for me, there's two different blueprints you could head. I think no blueprint is wrong at all. And I know if the Raiders do not go up and trade up, half a Raider nation will be pissed, which I understand. I understand 100%. I understand. I get the frustrations. But at the end of the day, both blueprints are not wrong at all. Both blueprints are not wrong at all. I heard JD5 smokes weed and doesn't watch tape. Pass it along so he drops to us. <laughs> what do, is Caleb goes one, May at two, and JJ at three. We get JD5 at four. Make me go for it. If JD passes by three and four, I would pull the trigger at five or even four. I think the Cardinals are the fourth pick, right? If I'm not mistaken, or the fifth, you trade up with the Cardinals. And it will cost less and trade up in the top three. That's the other scenario I could see happen. If the Raiders have a chance to move up to four or five to get Jaden Daniels, I think they will pull the trigger. I think they will. I think if it's top three, then no. I think if it's four and five, I think they would, and they would entertain the hell out of it for sure. He said, attach Daniel's name to Diddy so he draws God damn Kevin Lurker. God, come on, bro. Come on. Come on, bro. That's it. But obviously, moving on here. Trading back for a cornerback. We're going at 13. For me personally, I think you could get a great cornerback. I have a lot of cornerbacks on my list. And let me actually bring up my list so I could uh, tell you guys real quick. What are my favorite cornerbacks? I have it all here. Let me actually get it on my phone. There's a lot of cornerbacks you could get later on. I like TJ Tampa from Iowa State. I like NS Rakestraw Jr. from Missouri. He's a day two guy. I like Kalen King from Penn State. That is a day two guy as well. Then obviously you have, uh, I believe, that would go higher than Terry on Arnold, in my opinion. I think this cornerback here specifically will go above Terry on Arnold, and that's Nate Wiggins. Even though his injury is there, I still think he's above him when healthy. But if he's injured, then obviously below. And then Cooper DeGene from Iowa State. That's another guy that I believe is a higher corner than Terry on Arnold. That would go before Terry on Arnold. So those are other ones. And then obviously I also have um, DJ James that I talked about from Auburn. Um, I have Elijah Jones from Boston College that you could get in later days, day three. Um, Charles Smith Wade from FSU. He he allowed no touchdowns in coverage in 2023. Another guy that you could get in the later round. So obviously there's still other choices out there that you could go and you could head head to, right? <clears throat> um, Brock Purdy, Jalen Hurts are not franchise quarterbacks. They both went to the Super Bowl. None of the quarterbacks draft get us the Super Bowl next season. No CJ Strauss in the draft. Build up the defense. And here's the thing too, right? Jalen Hurts was actually a guy that everybody said was a franchise quarterback. And then they just stunk it up. They stunk it up. They stunk it up. It shows you that you need a team around them. You need a team. You need a team. And that's the most important thing. You need a team. And the trenches is the most important thing. Without a good offensive line, your running back can't do nothing. Your quarterback can't do nothing. 
that's important. The offensive line is one of the most important things. The defensive line, your cornerbacks will get burned every time because they have to run around with the wide receiver a, a bunch of times just to catch up to the route and all these different things. So in my opinion, the trenches are the most important things, and they've established that already on the defensive side of the ball, getting arguably the best free agent on the market. And then as far as the offensive side of the ball, I believe they will address the offensive line soon. I think they will get a veteran guard, and I hope they get Fuaga at the 13th spot, in my opinion. But obviously, uh, moving on here. Greg Newsom, how you guys feel about this rumor, huh? How you guys feel about this rumor? Greg Newsom the second, a Raider, via Dan Kazuda from the 33rd team. That's where they said possible trade suitors. You guys got to remember. Possible trade suitors. Not saying it's a guaranteed or not to say that they're in the mix, but it says possible trade suitors because these are two teams that are aggressive for the cornerback market. How do you guys feel about Greg Newsom the second? If the Raiders had a chance to grab him, would you, if you were the Raiders, would you go out there and, and get him? That's the question for you guys. For me, Greg Newsom next to Jack Jones, 23 years old, I'll be cool with it. I'll be cool with it. I'll be cool with it. So how you guys feel about Greg Newsom the second? How you guys feel about that? How you guys feel about that? For me, I would get him, right? Obviously. Um, let me get to some of the comments. Uh, let's fucking go AP get McCarthy Super Bowl bound in the future. That you're going for JJ McCarthy. I thought you wanted Bo Nix, Raider Paul. I thought you wanted Bo Nix. Uh Fuaga is a monster and would take our running game to the next level. And that's a fact. Fuaga is a beast, bro. He is like my guy, bro. You know when you say those are my guys? That's one of the guys that I have on my list at the top of my list that I would love at 13. Future right tackle, your right tackle spot. Better than the Luminor, in my opinion, as that rookie. All that stuff. He says Bonix going to Denver. Okay. But obviously, those are all things that I would go for there. Then again, Ben it ran a 4 3. <laughs> and all right. Let me see. Hold on. Um, let me get to some of the comments. Mm, Hertz dropped off significantly in the draft. He did. He did. He did. Chug Knight needs a cellmate. Uh, JJ McCarthy going to be a Raider AP said. And we'll talk about that. I actually have um, something about that. Let's actually continue, right? So Greg Newsom II, uh, that's another news in the, in the Raider world uh, that is happening there. And he's only exactly what John Leon says there. He's only 23, which is best, which is better. A young guy. A lot of potential, good corner, would be opposite of Jack Jones that brings that physicalness and all those different things. I would love to get a guy like that, and it won't cost you more than a second. It would be a third, fourth, fifth, or sixth round that you could get him for, man. And I ain't going to lie to you guys. I would be all in for Greg Newsom the second. And then drafting a rookie corner. Imagine that cornerback room, right? You have Jack Jones, Greg Newsom, and then Nate Hobbs. And then obviously behind them, you have Jacorian Bennett and whatever rookie you have coming on. And if you get another veteran, right? Those are all things, right? So I would be more confident with that cornerback uh, room, in my opinion. In my opinion. Um, let me get to some more comments. Uh, JJ, a Raider, C. Wood, and Brady want him in Vegas. We'll talk about it right now. We'll talk about all the, all, all that things because I've heard here. Shout out to Mazen Blue. What up, Mazen Blue? Good to see you, man. Hope all as well. Salute to Lou. Now going back, you feel me? We have Antonio Pierce said what? He had a little bit of a, I guess, interview, press conference, whatever you want to call it. And here's the first thing. That we're going to talk about. And I'm going to let you guys listen to it. Tell me if you guys could hear it. He's bored. 
I think it's a very talented group. I mean, we, we interviewed most of those guys at the combine, had great conversations with them. JJ McCarthy, you're talking about a national champion, a winner. So I don't know how he's not in the top three, if you want to be honest. You seen that? That's what he said about JJ McCarthy. Shout out to Desert Raider. What's good, Desert Raider? Good to see you. Hope all is well. Now, let's get into, I wouldn't say context clues, but let's say more. He says, presents Maze and Blue. Mmm, Maze and Blue. Bet, bet, bet. Did I say that right? Maze and Blue. There we go. Shout out to Maze and Blue in the chat. What's good? AP is going, is using JJ as a smoke screen, I think, just to get JD. And this is where I was going to go, right? When you look at the, I guess you could say, if you look at all the things that have transpired, and shout out to Desert Raider in the building. What up, Desert Raider? What up, Desert Raider? Good to see you. Hope all is well. His tone and everything has changed. He was talking highly about Jaden Daniels being aggressive in the in the draft, all these things. Now he's kind of laid back saying, how is J.J. McCarthy not top three? Psychological warfare, manipulation tactic, throw everybody out. That's what I see here. 110%. 110%, just like you guys said right there, right? AP trying to sell JJ to the Patriots and Commanders. AP gaslight, that's a fact. And oh, I'm all in for Newsom and John Leon. I'm 100% agreeing with you, bro. I'm all in for Newsom as well. Um, AP is using him as a smoke screen. Capping, I think he's capping. I think so too. So let me for everybody coming in. Let me uh let me re re replay this for you guys real quick. This board, I think it's a very talented group. I mean, we we interviewed most of those guys at the combine, had great conversations with them. JJ McCarthy, you're talking about a national champion, a winner. So I don't know how he's not in the top three. If you want to be honest, there you go. Uh, I've been trying to tell people about McCarthy. You want to focus on the throws he didn't make instead of the ones he did. Top three in third downs in the country. And now he's got his po he's got his positives. He's got his negatives, just like every other quarterback in this draft. I think his positives, negatives, um, obviously. Uh, but for me personally, when it comes to JJ McCarthy, I still think, in my honest opinion, he's a second round guy. In my opinion, or late first, second round, late first, second round, in my opinion, other teams have them at top three. Other people in general have them at top three, which is understandable. National champion under a NFL level coach, right? And Jim Harbaugh, all those things are taken into advantage. So I think this is a smoke screen and a gaslight by Antonio Pierce to try to get into the heads of the other draft. Uh, the other draft rooms that be like, hey, go out to get JJ McCarthy. Go out to get JJ McCarthy. Shout out to everybody coming in, man. Um, let me get to a few more comments. Shout out to Tubby Chile. What up, Chile? Good to see you. Hope all is well. If you guys can hit that like button, subscribe if you're new. I'll greatly, greatly appreciate it. I'll greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate it. Now, now obviously, moving. To next here. Here's a question for you guys. Is JJ McCarthy top three quarterback in the draft? What do you guys think? Is JJ McCarthy a top three quarterback in the draft? Shout out to Desert Raider. I don't know if I saluted you. What up, Desert Raider? Is JJ McCarthy a top three quarterback in the draft? I think JJ McCarthy. Is not a top three quarterback in this year's draft, in my opinion. I do not think he is at all. I think he is top six, not top three, in my opinion. Watching everything I've watched from his film to his play to all those things, I think that he's a little overrated the way they give him. But I would not doubt it, and I'm going to say this again. I would not doubt it if he gets chosen in the top five. I would not disagree, and I will not be surprised if he goes top five. I would not doubt it. 
He says overvalued. JJ got kicked around early for saying he's top four. The fellow Michigan fan says you tripping. <laughs> JJ is a top three if you want to get JDF four. Personally, no on JJ. He said Bears take him. <laughs> Can the Bears take him? That would be a surprise. That would be a surprise. McCarthy needs to be needs a good ground game to be most effective, and that's a fact. But somebody like Minnesota or Denver will pick him up, and that's why I think he would. I would not doubt it if he goes top five. I would not doubt it if he goes top five. In my opinion, I don't think. I think he will go top five. I think he might go top five, because uh, any quarterback would look good like that in that offense. And that, you know that that's rightfully they had a lot of weapons and stuff like that. Shout out to Holly Tanner. What up, sis? Hope all as well. He said, "If you say no to JJ, you don't know what a quarterback looks like." <laughs> so you're saying anybody would have won the Natty with that offense? You know what? I think so. And here's my counter to Michigan fans, right? If it wasn't for Michael Penix running for his life and 90% of his receivers dropping passes, I think that game would have been a lot closer or different if it happened. I truly believe that. I do believe that. I do believe that. I do believe that. I do believe that. Because this is arguably the best Michigan team in a while. The best Michigan team. And we know what happened last year. Let's not forget what happened last year. Let's not forget what happened last year. Let's not forget about it. Let's not forget about it. You know, if you need a little recap, give me a second. Give me a second. Let me try to... Second. Give me a second, yeah. Trying to find it. Give me a second. Um, let me see. Hold on. You guys see that? Oh, it's a little blurry. Let's not forget. 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 Let me. Oh, there we go. If you think any quarterback shaking my account with USC, I can't. So you don't think Jaden Daniels, Caleb Williams, or any of them will win with that team? You're telling me right now. You're telling me right now any of them will not win. See, brother, sometimes we got to be unbiased, bro. Come on. We have to be unbiased here. I have to be unbiased with my USC, too. I have to be unbiased with my USC, too. I have to be unbiased with my USC, too. And then TCU got destroyed at the national championship game. That's a fact. TCU got ran over after, too. Uh, shout out to Frankie V. Grady, JJ McCarthy, prospect score 6.40. Frankie, do you think that's prospect score out of 10? Out of 100? What is it based on? He said, and their stats would have looked more like McCarthy. Who knows, man? We will never know, right? We will never know because it's never going to happen, right? <laughs> we will never know. But, you know, obviously, like I said, I do think McCarthy is going top five because some team has him as the top three quarterback. In my opinion, J.J. McCarthy is not top three. And that's just my opinion, right? We all got different opinions, right? 
Some people who think he's top three, others think he's bottom half. I think he's not top three, in my opinion. He's not top three. But will he go top three, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. You're not the end thing. It don't matter what I got to say. It all matters what the scouting departments in the NFL organizations want and what they have on their draft board. That's what they think, right? That's what it is, right? I wouldn't doubt it if he goes top three, like I said. So now moving on here. Shout out to my boy Perez, man, for this post here. Um, Another thing he said, and it's about Josh Jacobs. That one hurt. It's a business. Money talks. Bullshit walks. What you guys think? What you guys think about this quote? That one hurt. It's a business. Money talks. Bullshit walks. And that was his say on Josh Jacobs. What do you think that means, y'all? What do you think that means? Uh, who do you like starting, AOC or Minshew? It's tough to say right now. I think right now, in this moment, Swift, like in this moment, Tuesday, March 26, 6.47 p.m. in the West Coast, 9.47 in the East Coast, Minshew. Training camp, after training camp, it might be AOC. I might have a different answer for you. Or unless we go out there and draft a rookie. Right, depending on the rookie. But for me, right now, March 26, 6 47 p.m. in the West Coast, Minshew. But yeah. Jacobs wants the Wisconsin cream cheese. Shout out to everybody, man. Let me go back to the thing. So obviously, that's one thing he said. JJ, he wanted the bag shot at Mark, in my opinion. Okay. But there you go, man. This one hurt. It's a business. Money talks. Bullshit walk, man. He didn't say it in a negative way. He mentioned he did the best thing for his family. And I agree with Vinci. He is way more game ready right now. That's a fact. That's a fact. So that's another thing that happened, obviously, as far as the news on Antonio Pierce and stuff like that. And now moving on here. There have been some new league rules, y'all. New league rules today. Some interesting ones at that. Some interesting ones at that. Some interesting ones. And I want to hear your guys' take on it. The NFL hybrid kickoff model has passed, y'all. So if you guys don't know what the hybrid kickoff model is, if you ever seen the XFL, this is what it is. You see that? Let me play one more time for you guys if you missed it. And let me actually pause it. Two, everybody waits next to each other in two lines. The kicker's all the way by the 30-yard line. And the receiver is by the 10-yard line, maybe the end zone. And then the moment he catches the ball, everybody blocks and does everything they can. So, you know what that means. You know what that means. The special teams, special teams is going to be one of the most important things this upcoming year. Special teams 100% because there will be more kick return touchdowns than ever before. And let me play it again for you guys to know that hybrid thing. I don't like it in my opinion. In my opinion, I don't like it. In my opinion. Mock drafts is like watching soccer. Well, cool, Kev, mock drafts are like you saying jokes. (laughs) Fuck you. Soccer is entertaining. Fuck you. (laughs) But that is one of the hybrid kickoff models there. So they fucking up the NFL. I'm not liking the new rules. I think AOC. I think AOC is working on his mobility. He is. He is. Uh, Every year, they got to fuck with the game. (laughs) And that's what it looks like, right? That's what it looks like. 
soccer way better than Mock does. That's a fact. We the people speak them facts. We the people speak them facts. Now, the other league rule. I love this league rule, y'all. I love this rule. I don't know about you guys. Instead of the trade deadline ending in week eight, after week eight, now it ends under week nine. I like this rule specifically. This rule right here, I'm all for it. Trade deadline is a week, one week forward. Now, one week forward, after week nine games, the NFL trade line will be a go, and it will end up ending then. So for me personally, I like this. It's an extra week for people to make trades. Some trades don't go through at week eight because they don't have enough time. Now you have enough time. You have an extra week. So I like it. I don't know about you guys, but I like this rule. Or you could say this. I guess you could say this new format. I don't know. This format right here. Right away, AOC is working on his mobility, but AP said he does not expect AOC to be a running quarterback. That won't work at the pro level. Minshew can scrap on extend plays. That's a fact. Um, he said the gambling gets more corrupt with special team bets. But I like this rule, y'all. I like this rule personally. I like this rule. Now the final one is an interesting one. Flag football. I'm just kidding. But the NFL has banned, I repeat, the NFL has banned the hip drop tackle the competition committee was unanimous on. it. now, if you don't know what the hip drop tackle was, I have a clip here of when Tony Pollard got injured and I think tore his ACL. Here you go. This is the hip drop tackle here. Once again, for you guys, the hip drop tackle. The hip drop tackle. So, that is the other thing as far as the NFL has banned the hip drop tackle. So, that's pretty much for today, y'all. Pretty much, and if you're just coming in or you don't know what the hell has been happening, well, these are the different things we talked about today. Aiden O'Connell, quarterback one, Raider draft scenarios, trading back for cornerback, Greg Newsom to the second, a Raider, Antonio Pierce said one. He had a couple things to say there, JJ McCarthy, and also this one hurt. It's a business, money talks, bullshit walks. And then the new league rules, which is the hybrid kickoff model again to play for you guys. That's the hybrid kickoff model. Until he catches the ball, both teams could end up going. The trade deadline got moved from week after week eight to week nine, an extra week. And then the hip drop tackle right there as well, as you can see there. So, that's pretty much everything that I had to talk about today. Um, there's no other Raider news that's following there. Um, it's not even a coach move or, or a real thing. It's just dudes trying to tackle bigger opponent. Now, the other thing with it too, right? People like Derrick Henry will get away with this, y'all. This helps running backs like even Josh Jacobs, right? Somebody that's hard to get pushed down. Him. Derrick Henry. These type of guys that is hard to... From an angle tackle, it's going to be harder to tackle them now because now you can't use the hip drop tackle. So they will benefit from it. There's benefit. Just like in the NBA. If you guys remember, the NBA used to allow players at the three-point line to pretty much flop in order to get a three-point and, and get a three-point play on the free throw line. Instead, they ended up making it hard to do that. So that means people like James Harden, that did it a lot, didn't benefit from it. Here, a lot of the bigger running backs and even bigger receivers will benefit from this, and you might see larger touchdowns this year. You might see even more running back touchdowns for 50-plus yards because of the hip drop tackle being banned. Now, am I for it? No, 
I think it kills the tackling and the defense to find ways to tackle the opponent. But also, I could see where they're coming from from the injury standpoint. People have torn their ACL, have broken their leg. There has been multiple injuries due to that tackle. It is dangerous, but at the same time, that's what football is. It's a physical sport that you know what you're getting yourself into at the end of the day. You're getting yourself into a sport that is very physical, that you're going to hit every day with pads on. You're going to end up getting concussions. You're going to get injured. You're going to get long-term side effects and stuff like this. At the end of the day, it's ruining the game, and it's making it harder for the defense to do their job. Just like the NBA, they're taking defense out of the game. That's what I'm saying. People can't even play defense. People can't even put their hands up, and it's a foul. You know? And that's how the NFL is leading. And me personally, I don't like it. But you know, it is what it is. You can't do nothing about it. It's up to them. And if you guys can, hit that like button, man. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you know. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Um, so was many other quarterbacks that ended up doing nothing. If you swipe the legs on the defense, it's just as dangerous. That's a fact. That's a fact. Even tackling normal could get somebody injured. You just don't know when people get injured. So you can't prevent that in a physical sport. We finally have a good defense, and they hit us with this. And that's a fact. It's dumb. It's dumb. So, who knows, right? Who knows? Uh, so, uh, um, just like the NBA taking defense. Let me see if I catch up to any other things here. AOC is working on mobility. Shout out to everybody that came in, man. I appreciate you guys. Hit that like button, subscribe if you're new. But that's pretty much for today, y'all. That's pretty much it for today. I appreciate you guys for being here. Um, hit that like button, subscribe if you're new. Remember, every show Tuesday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 9 p.m. Eastern, and then Thursday. Thursday, 2 for 1 Nation podcast around 2.30, 3 o'clock, 3.30 on Two on Thursdays. Thursdays, Thursdays, two for one nation podcast with Radio Twan. And then Tuesdays, obviously, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 9 p.m. Eastern every Tuesday. And then there might be surprise lives on Monday, on Wednesdays, maybe Fridays at 6 p.m. around 6 p.m. as well. Maybe if there's rules, if there's things that get brought out, breaking news, all these different things. But also stay tuned for YouTube shorts and videos. There's a video out right now on my channel, probably my first official. YouTube video pretty much. Go check it out. Go leave a comment. Go hit that like button. And on this one, man, go go leave a comment after this live is done to help the algorithm, man. It'll help me a lot. And just hitting the like button will help the algorithm as well. So I appreciate you guys for today, man. Blessings to you guys and your families. Tough times never last, but tough people do, man. Um, and remember, you know, life is too short right now. So please, please, please um, tell your loved ones you love them. And I appreciate everybody for being here. Um, besides that, I think we are good. We are good to go. Hopefully you guys like the new format. There's a new format now, as you guys seen, if you guys missed anything, go back and go check it out and stuff like that. Um, but besides that, again, this was the SC Raiders talk, AKA your boy, Eric. And remember, tell times never last, but tell people doing your job, and tell people, man. Until next time, y'all Thursday, I'll see you guys then. And you already know, like always. Right. Prayers all day and prayers up to the ones in Baltimore over that bridge that happened over there. Peace out, y'all.